Hey folks, I'm Professor Darius. Let's talk reparations. Currently, the California Reparations Task Force is wrapping up its work on studying and proposing reparations for its black citizens. If you've been following discussions, you've probably come across comments such as this. Oh my God, California was a free state. Why are you talking about reparations? In this video, I'm going to address why California's status as a free state is irrelevant to the discussion on black reparations. So, buckle up and stay tuned. Thank you for joining me on African Elements. If you're new to this channel, we produce content that promotes knowledge and understanding of African American history and culture. In this episode, Debunking the Free State Fallacy, Why Reparations in California Matter. California is often seen as a progressive state that has historically been at the forefront of social change. Many people are under the impression that California was an anti-slavery state and question why the state is currently exploring reparations proposals. Reparations are a means to right past wrongs and repair the damage done to a group that has experienced historical injustice. In terms of African Americans, the reparation discussion often centers around slavery but it's crucial to understand that the concept of reparations extends beyond this singular issue. Reparations addresses not only the historical wrongs related to slavery, but also systemic racism and discriminatory practices that have persisted and continue to harm African Americans in various aspects of life. Nevertheless, California's connection to slavery is worth a closer look. California was admitted into the Union as a free state in 1850, but that doesn't mean that slavery was entirely absent. Slavery was practiced in California primarily by Southern slave owners from the Deep South who brought enslaved individuals with them into the California gold fields. This presence of slavery in the state demonstrates that California was not entirely free from the legacy of slavery, contrary to popular belief. California not only allowed slavery within its borders, but it passed laws that actively encouraged it. In 1852, California passed its own fugitive slave law. The law was a clear indication of the state's support for slave owners and further entrenches California's connection to the history of slavery in the United States. California's 1852 fugitive slave law had significant consequences that reinforced the institution of slavery and perpetuated the mistreatment of enslaved individuals. In line with the National Fugitive Slave Act of 1850 that accompanied California's admission into the Union as a free state, the law allowed for the capture and return of escaped slaves to their enslavers, aligning California with the pro-slavery sentiments of the time. However, the California law went a step further. In addition to requiring local authorities and citizens to actively participate in capturing and returning escaped or fugitive slaves, California's harsher law didn't even require that enslaved blacks be fugitives. That's right. The law applied not just to runaways, but even when enslavers brought their human property into California. Wait a minute. I thought California was anti-slavery. Nevertheless, as a consequence, there were approximately 4,086 slaves present in California, according to the 1860 U.S. Census. All told, enslaved blacks in California paid an estimated $750,000 to free themselves and their families through self-purchase during the period leading up to the Civil War. The Fugitive Slave Law in California also contributed to the overall culture of racism and discrimination against African Americans. It sent a clear message that even in a state labeled as free, the rights and well-being of enslaved individuals were disregarded in favor of maintaining white supremacy and the institution of slavery. In fact, white supremacy was codified in California's legal framework such that both free and enslaved blacks were denied the right to vote, the right to testify, and the right to serve on juries, effectively turning California into an unsafe environment for both free and enslaved blacks. Additionally, while white citizens could settle unclaimed land under the Homestead Act of 1862, California denied blacks homesteading rights. This institutionalized racism didn't magically disappear after slavery ended. 
It continued to shape the treatment of African Americans in California for years. Beyond slavery, California has a historical laundry list of racial discrimination against African Americans. Housing discrimination, redlining, employment and wage disparities, all these factors widen the racial wealth gap that persists to this day. The wealth gap between black and white Americans is a direct result of over a century of inequality and discrimination, including historical and contemporary practices in housing, education, and employment. In 2019, the median black household had only $24,100 in wealth, compared to $188,200 for the median white household. This stark disparity has far-reaching consequences for the economic stability and opportunities available to African Americans in California and throughout the United States. Home ownership rates for black families were a depressing 44.1% in 2019, compared to 74.5% for white families. This home ownership chasm is a major contributor to the racial wealth gap. Thanks to redlining and racially restrictive covenants, residential segregation is alive and kicking, limiting wealth-building opportunities for African Americans. Redlining is the practice of denying or limiting financial services such as loan or insurance to certain neighborhoods or areas based on their racial or ethnic composition. This discriminatory practice was prevalent in the United States during the 20th century and contributed to the segregation and economic disparities black communities faced. Redlining was made illegal in 1968 with the Fair Housing Act, but its effect on black communities still linger today. Racially restrictive covenants are legal agreements that prohibit the sale or rental of a property to individuals of a certain race or ethnicity. These covenants were common in the United States during the 20th century and were used to enforce residential segregation and maintain white supremacy. While the Supreme Court made racially restrictive covenants illegal in 1948, their legacy also persists in the form of residential segregation and the racial wealth gap. African Americans face underemployment, unemployment, and lower wages compared to white Americans, further widening the racial wealth gap. Discriminatory hiring practices, occupational segregation, and limited access to quality education and job training have persisted like stubborn stains on the fabric of society. A considerable chunk of adult wealth comes from intergenerational transfers, such as inheritance or gift money, which are less common for African Americans. This lack of intergenerational wealth transfers exacerbates the racial wealth gap, as African American families are less likely to receive financial support from previous generations, further limiting their ability to accumulate wealth and pass it on to future generations, like a never-ending game of catch-up. Reparations are a means to address the historical wrongs committed against African Americans, including the legacy of slavery and ongoing systemic racism. By providing compensation to those who have been harmed, reparations aim to acknowledge and redress these injustices and contribute to the healing process for African American communities. The persistent racial wealth gap threatens the economic security of black Californians and perpetuates economic inequality. Reparations can play a crucial role in addressing these disparities by providing financial support to African American families and communities, helping close the racial wealth gap and promote greater economic equality. So there you have it. Reparations are a complex and multifaceted set of issues that extends beyond the issue of slavery. While California may seem like an unlikely candidate for reparations, its history tells a different story. The state had a significant number of slaves, passed pro-slavery legislation, and has a history of racial discrimination. Check out the Task Force to Study and Develop Reparation Proposals for African Americans interim report at the link below for a more detailed look at their work and the specific items in need of reparative measures that they've identified along with the specific factors the task force considered. I'm Professor Darius. More than ever, I want to extend my deepest gratitude to the history makers over on Patreon for their continued support. You can join them for just a dollar a month and gain early access to ad-free content. Otherwise, you can support African Elements for free just by dropping a like, commenting, subscribing, and sharing. Either way, thank you for watching, and until next time, I'll see you in the comments.